This is the choir of the Mela refugee camp. The camp is located in Thailand across the border from Burma, which was renamed Myanmar by the ruling military junta in 1989. These singers were all able-bodied before. They lost their limbs due to the civil war, which has been ongoing in Burma since 1962. Twenty-year-old Ma Pu says his parents were both killed by the junta. He was living in the jungle with his siblings, where he faced the perpetual threat of landmines. Newspapers in Burma report more than 10,000 landmine survivors in 2006. <laughs> After the landmine incident, Ma Pu escaped to the Mei La refugee camp in Thailand. Today there are an estimated 160,000 refugees, mostly Karen, living in fenced up refugee camps like these. The Karen are an ethnic minority in Burma. In World War II, they fought alongside the British against the Japanese invasion. In return, they were promised an independent homeland for their children. But when Britain granted Burma independence, the promise was forgotten. And since then, the junta has been trying to quash the Karen separatist movement for over four decades. The conflict between the Myanmar government and the Karen is considered to be the longest running civil war in the world and it has become somewhat of a forgotten story. Refugees at the Mela camp have been living here for more than 25 years. An entire generation of people have grown up here. David, for example, attended school run by an NGO within the confines of the camp. Despite being educated, he doesn't think he will be able to get a job. As refugees, it is illegal for people like David to work in Thailand. His parents also do not want him to return to Burma, as it is unsafe. But having lived within the compounds of a camp all his life, David has other views. Uh, being unable to work, all the people in Mei La camp 
are given weekly rations. Food and shelter is paid for by the Thailand-Burma Border Consortium, or the TBBC. This is a group of 12 international non-governmental organizations from 10 countries. Their funding depends entirely on donors. The problem with the economic recession no? and also the problem of the world economic and all things like that reduce a lot of the, the donors, no? donation. So in, in, I think this affects all the NGOs, all the different groups, including TBBC, which is uh, responsible for supplying the needs for the people, the basic need for the people. And all, like uh, for medical also, they have to redo or what you call it, many of the program, the project. No? So, and also the, the money, the budget that they have, they have to cut the budget in so many, so many ways. Yeah? Yeah. A budget cut means less people are being sent to the hospitals every week. Before, an average of five people visited the hospitals in town every week. Now there is only money for one or two people, and their illness needs to be absolutely critical. A budget cut also means there has been less food for the people living here. We get food by TBBC, this Time Burmese Border Consortium. They provided rice, 15 kilo per month, also charcoal, wine, cooking wine, meat, and salt, and chili, like that. Also sugar, sugar, they provided every month. Is it yes. enough? Uh, some family, they, they are enough, but some of, most of them, they are not enough because there are more relatives who come and stay with them, so they are not enough. Because the new arrival arrived, they cannot get ration, like, so they are not enough. Like, mm. Do you ever get meat? No, no meat. The situation is frustrating, to say the least. The refugees are hungry, but they cannot provide for themselves despite being educated and able to work. They have uh, strength, they have uh, energy, they go and to walk, want to walk. And also some of them, they have uh, education, good education, but they are not allowed to go out and walk. Just because of that, they feel some of them to be discouraged about their life, their future. This place is uh, but like a village, but on the other hand, like a big prison like that. Because we cannot go out, only restriction is that we cannot go out, and we cannot do that. Outside, if we go outside, we find the, how to say, the vegetables, or go and get bamboos outside the camp. They are forbidden. We cannot go and cut. We cannot go outside like that. Mm. So like a prison. Mm. Thailand has hosted more than 150,000 refugees who have crossed these rivers. Thai officials have helped to provide refugees with food and basic shelter. And every year, Thai security forces allow more new refugees to cross the border safely. But should Burmese refugees be allowed to compete for jobs with Thai people? Views are divided on this. Many Burmese are already living and working in Thailand illegally, bribing their way out of trouble. And while people like Winner are frustrated with the employment situation, he also acknowledges the generosity of the Thais. Winner believes the only solution is political change in Burma. I want to say that only the, the international community just have a Burma getting changed. Because uh, nowadays, most of the Burmese peoples are living in their country. So live in the, the, like the neighboring country, like Thailand. Also like uh, the Western side is like Bangladesh or India. 
they go out and walk in the, uh, the other country as a illegal immigrant. So not only that, fighting is stayed in Burma, especially civil war. It stay going 62 years. Civil war is going. So have Burma to stop fighting. Have Burma to get democracy. So want to go back and live in our country with peacefully. In recent years, the United Nations Refugee Agency has helped to resettle some 65,000 of the Karen refugees in, in countries such as the United States, Denmark, and Sweden. But the number represents a fraction of those who need help. If you are registered, if you have the UN registration, number if you are registered then it means you can you are eligible you can apply for resettlement to the third country but many people uh, there are quite a few people they want to go there because they know they're living in the camp for many years where you have no chance of uh, no freedom so they want to uh, go to the third country where they can live freely or for their children to get better education or things like that no? But many people, they think, they know very well that uh, resettling in a third country is not also the solution to the problem because anywhere you live in the world, you have problem. And worse is if you cannot speak the language, you have to deal with an, a new, new language, new culture, and everything new. You have to start life from the beginning. So it's really very difficult and also Many people, they, they feel like they don't want to go. For the thousands of Burmese in Thailand, uncertainty clouds their future. There is no indication that the political situation in Burma will change or that Thailand will rethink its policy towards refugees. Burmese children are a common sight in the Thai town of Mai Sat. Pache works together with his older brother, Julafi, and their other friends. They each make about a dollar a day selling the garbage to recycling companies. They all have similar stories. Their parents cannot work as they are illegal immigrants. And the police tend to leave the juveniles alone. So the young boys have become responsible for providing for their family. Social workers say that Julafi and Pache come from a loving family. Their parents try to find work to provide for the children, but they are constantly being arrested. Their father, Kiao Wu, took a loan to purchase a rickshaw, but it got damaged when he was arrested, and now the family is struggling to repay the loan. <laughs> အခုကကျွန်တော်တို့ဘယ်လိုပြောပါမှာဆိုတော့အကျွေးစမ်းတွေအရင်ရှင်းမှာလောက်ပါမယ်ဒါမြို့လည်းရှိတယ်အဲ
The family left Burma eight years ago. Life in Thailand may be difficult, but they feel it's still better compared to Burma. ในตะกาแลลุลุลันนี่ดูยาเลยได้มั้ยดีกาก็ปัวบลูเพลสอลัมมัมซี่ละตะคุบะลัมมัมซี่ซอตัวยูตะตาตันลอกนะพันมาเ
just as providers of help, but really as people that want to show that um, that we are able to relate, that we want to establish friendships and really see um, how we can lift up their spirits, their sense of dignity as well. It's very important. NGOs have been absolutely critical to the survival of hundreds of thousands of refugees. They provide shelter to babies abandoned in the markets. They provide food to thousands who are going hungry. And they provide education to students who cannot afford to pay. There are hundreds of NGOs located in the Thai-Burma border. And most of them struggle with fundraising. The Elpis School is one such example. จัดการระบบการศึกษากับเรื่องการซัพพอร์ตบ้างเพราะว่าปัจจุบันนี้เราจําเป็นต้องหาเงินมาเพื่อที่จะใช้จ่ายในค่าอาหารประจําวันให้
้และก็เด็กผู้หญิงนั้นเมื่อเขากลับไปยังประเทศพม่านั้นบางทีบางคนนั้นอาจจะได้รับการข่มเหงทางด้านเรื่องเพศเพราะว่าไม่มีความปลอดภัยสำหรับเด็กเหล่านี้จึงไม่มีเด็กคนไหนที่อยากจะกลับในประเทศพม่า Human smuggling gangs are known to be in operations in Thailand, according to the U.S. State Department. Thailand has put in place anti-trafficking legislation in 2008, but enforcement has been problematic. Globally, more than 12 million people were victims of sex trafficking and forced labor in 2009. Stateless and without protection, Refugees like these Burmese children become easy praise for smugglers. <laughs> 